a consensus to terminate at 9.30. But again, breathe in and out. But again, I'm asking with your consensus if we can push it for another half an hour so that we terminate at 10. Is that okay? You know, honorable senators, we have to vote for 11 counts individually. So, so we will do an extra half an hour, then we terminate. The honorable Olakina, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this evening, let me disabuse this notion that an impeachment process is an attack of the mountain region. Mr. Speaker, an, an impeachment process is a vital process of holding public officers, state officers, accountable. Mr. Speaker, I've heard on various occasions from my colleagues, those who oppose this motion, that we are targeting the mountain. I beg to differ, and I do so with the following there findings. There is a lot of movement in the chamber, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Senators, and pose, uh, Senator pose my time. Let's take pose our seat, time. please. And let us hear the Honorable Senator in silence. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me begin again by saying I want to, dis to disabuse this notion that an impeachment process is an attack on of a region. It is not. It is holding. It is a constitutional process that this House has been given the task to be able to hold public officers accountable. Today, we are discussing the impeachment of a, pre of a deputy president. Tomorrow, we might be discussing the impeachment of a president. We have constantly debated impeachment of governors here. I've never heard at one given time when people come up and say we are targeting a particular community. We are not, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have been entertained this afternoon or the last two days with the defense alleging that the shareholding utterances made by the deputy president is that he was referring to the shareholding of a coalition agreement. And Mr. Speaker, we were demonstrated here that the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition agreed upon how they can be able to share different you know, positions in government. In fact, I thought they would say that the Speaker of this House was also negotiated. I believe when the Speaker of this House was proposed to be voted for, he was voted for by all the Senators. And never have I seen the Speaker giving preference to the people of the coastal region. So, Mr. Speaker, I find those, I do, I'm not convinced by the defense that the shareholding being uttered by the Deputy President is based on a, sh a coalition agreement. Mr. Speaker, the defense attempted to respond to the allegation on ground eight, whereby they say that the utterances of the Deputy Speaker violate Section 132 of the Penal Code. It is important for us to know what Section 132 of the Penal Code says. It actually make it illegal to utter, print, or publish words or acts that brings into contempt the lawful authority of a public officer. The decision made by Justice Esther Minor in her capacity as a judge of the High Court is protected by the position that she holds. So it is a bit unsensical for the Deputy President to go out in public instead of following the due process of the law, to be able to go out and appeal the decision of that judge. Until today, Mr. Speaker, the coercion which was used to be able to return the 200 million shillings back to the Deputy President, that money must go back to the, um, the public. Mr. Speaker, the Deputy President has got a forum. Article 240 of the Constitution puts him as one of the key members in the National Security Council. He has got a forum 
to be able to go out there and express his dissatisfaction with the, um, with the NSIS, NIS. When he calls a press conference and outright says that the Director General of the National Intelligence has completely brought that service into a halt, he was exposing the secrets of this country and what he was doing is that he was actually saying that we have got no control. Mr. Speaker, if for anything today I'll cast my vote based on various issues. One, on shareholding. Two, on the violation of Section 132 of the Penal Code. Three, on the issues of coercion. I listened to the gentleman from Kempset this afternoon. When he said that he had to sit for hours at ESCC to be able to come out with one bid board. One, he was called on the 11th. When the defense were trying to justify that, instead of actually reading the recommendation made by the Senate, they were going through the submissions of one of the witnesses who appeared before my committee of health. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm convinced. Senator Seki. Senator was elected with the people of Kajan. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. <clears throat> I also want to put my voice to this motion of the proposal to removal of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa, as a motion uh, by Honorable Mutuse. I want to say that the grounds that has been put to this house from number one to number 11, Honorable Speaker, I thank the legal counsel of the Deputy President for interrogating the witnesses more so Honorable Mutuse being the lead witness and the mover of the motion. Honorable Speaker, I want to put to this uh, house that we are unable, I am unable to see evidence that has been put in place for the 11 counts, 11 uh, grounds in this motion. Honorable Mutuse was unable to demonstrate on issues that has been raised in this motion. Particularly, can go to one or two, the motion or the counts seven or charge seven where the deputy president was uh, alleged to have one uh, have a 5.2 billion within his assets within that small period of time honorable speaker i understand that this witness was not able to explain and demonstrate that the honorable deputy president was got the, the, the 5.2 billion because of the contracts that he has uh, done with the government. He wasn't able to demonstrate that this money, 5.2 billion, was received or was uh, the deputy president received because of this, from this company, from another company, or this other company. There was no evidence on this count. Honorable Speaker, the kind of impunity I've seen in the issue of listing 22 companies without evidence of what the track of the monies or funds that has been done or that has been used to demonstrate that these companies are doing business with government was not, not there. This is impunity of a high order. To bring 22 companies and you are unable 
as a move of the motion to explain that this company A, company one to the company number 22, have received or got money from government or from government institutions. But you just put it on the motion and it becomes something to impeach the deputy president. Honorable Speaker, we have seen where the deputy president is alleged to have conspired with a company, Agro, Agro Brick Investment Limited, where the control of State House, as an accounting officer of the State House, signed the contract, and it is brought to the motion that this contract and this company is alleged to have been a, con a company to remove the deputy president. Honorable Speaker, this House, this afternoon, received a report from the legal counsel of the deputy president that the, president, the deputy president is sick. Now, we are ready. Senator Faki. Asante uh, Mwishima Speaker wa kunipa fursa hii kuchangua, kuchangia mswada wa kumbandua naibu wa, naibu wa rais kutoka katika ofisi yake ya naibu wa rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya. Mwishima Speaker kwanza pia mimi ni jiunge na enzangu kumtakia afueni ya haraka naibu wa rais kwa sababu tulikuwa ni matarajio yetu kwa mba jioni ya leo angekuwa hapa kujitetea kwa madai katha wa katha ambao hame ameletewa katika bunge hili ili kuweza kutakasa jina lake. Mheshimiwa Speaker, nimeweza kuangalia mashtaka yake okay, na moja. Na baadhi ya mashtaka ambayo nimeona kuwa yamenigusa ni kwanza ni shtaka la kwanza ambapo ni kusema uh, kuwa Kenya ina wenye hisa. Na kwake wenye hisa ni wale ambao walipigia kura uh, Kenya kwanza katika uchaguzi wa mwaka 2022. Mheshimiwa Speaker, hiyo imebagua makabila zaidi ya 47 katika nchi yetu. Na sisi ambao tutatoka pwani ambao kutoka mwanzo uh, pwani ilikuwa si koloni ya Kenya ilitupa mshtuko mkubwa kwa sababu tuniona kwamba tunazidi kutengwa katika mamlaka ya Jamhuri yetu ya Kenya. Mheshimiwa Speaker, shtaka la pili ambalo limenibamba Nila kuhusu ukiukaji wa sheria na hapa nitaangazia uh, shtaka la pili na shtaka la sita ambapo amekiuka sheria ni usiana na uh, uiano katika nchi yetu ya Kenya na vile vile pia kuleta makabila na jamii zote pamoja. Mwishima speaker la tatu ni ukosefu wa nidhamu, soya la ukosefu wa nidhamu katika kumshambulia hadharani mkurugenzi wa shirika la ujasusi nchini mwetu. Mr. Speaker, hili tokea mnamo tare 26 mwezo wa 6 mwaka huu ambapo naibu wa rais alikuwa Mombasa na akatoa taarifa ambazo zilihujumu usalama wa taifa ambapo yeye kama naibu wa rais alikuwa na fursa ya kuweza kuzungumzia uh, mambo haya katika serikali na vile vile pia hatua za kurekebisha zikachukuliwa. Mr. Speaker, napoangalia makosa yote haya ni kwamba Haya ya singiweza kumfika uh, naibu wa rais kwa sasa kwa sababu maswala haya haya amba ya meangaziwa hapa Yaliangaziwa na senator sifuna alipoleta msuada wake wakumkosoa naibu wa rais lakini msuada ule ulikufa ndani ya bunge hili la senate Mwishima speaker uh, maswala ya ukiukaji wa kiapo Haya mwishima speaker haya na nguvu kwa sababu wakati alipokuwa na apishwa siku ya kwanza Aliapa viapo vili Kwa hivyo hatujui ni kiapo kipi ambacho alikikeuka wakati e, mwishimua mudhusi alipokuja hapa na kuzungumzia maswala haya. Mwishima speaker nitamnuku, nikimalizia nitamnuku, senator Urengo aliposema kwa mba, katika bunge nilokisha kwa mba, mapinduzi ya nakula watoto wake. Kwa kiingereza revolutions eat their own children. 
Na hii tunaona kwamba mapinduzi yameanza kula watoto wa Kenya kwanza. Wakianza na mtoto mkubwa kabisa ambaye naibu wa rais. Kwa hivyo ni swala ambalo ni maswala ambalo yameendelea katika bunge hili bunge lililokwisha tuliona hapa uh, profesa Kindiki aliteta sana hapa lakini bala, ba, vile vile mapinduzi ya kamla kwa hivyo ni kwamba lazima tujenge siasa katika nchi yetu ambazo zitakuwa ni siasa za kusonga mbele tukichaguliwa kama viongozi tukizungumza tuzungumze maswala ya kitaifa Tusizungumze masuala ya vijijini mwetu wakati sisi matarajio wa Kenya wote ni kwamba tunazungumzia masuala ya kitaifa. Kwa hiyo mheshimiwa speaker napongeza pia bunge hili la Senate kwa kuonesha uh, ukakamavu na vile vile pia umahiri mkubwa wakati tumeweza kusikiza kesi ya naibu wa rais. Labda kwa siku za usoni tutapata pia fursa ya kusikiza kesi ya rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya katika bunge hili letu. Asante mheshimiwa speaker kwa kunipa fursa hii. Senator Oroba. Thank you Mr. Speaker. First of all I want to say that this is not about a relationship. It's not about a friendship that has deteriorated. I have been hearing people say if it's about a relationship, if it's about a, 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 a marriage that has broken, why don't they go back and make peace and come together? No, Mr. Speaker. These two individuals, His Excellency the President and the Deputy President, did not come together so that they can live happily ever after and have children, Mr. Speaker. They came together so that they could deliver development to the people of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. So this, what we have been doing here for hours and hours, it pains me when I hear people saying, you know, about adultery and relationships and what, and I'm wondering, no, we have been here because of 11 counts, Mr. Speaker. A very serious impeachment motion because of not two, not three, but 11 counts, Mr. Speaker. In my condition, I have had to sit here and go through all 11 counts to understand which one actually has been substantiated and which one holds water. So no, this is not about a relationship. And we should not expect that because they came together, they should now go and sit somewhere and make peace. Now, and, and you know, stop disturbing us. No, Mr. Speaker, 11 counts of an impeachment motion is something very serious, Mr. Speaker. And I, it's very unfortunate that of the 11 counts, about four counts, Mr. Speaker, were not even substantiated, Mr. Speaker. It, very shocking. When you have a team of legal experts sitting down bringing 11 counts, at, at the very least, they should have even substantiated nine, Mr. Speaker. But four counts, ground two, when you talk about undermining a cabinet decision, how did we not have the witness come here to speak so that we can be able to understand. Some of us, we don't sit in cabinet, and we need to understand what a cabinet decision is, how it is undermined. Mr. Speaker, the witness did, was not produced. We had another witness who did not come here in terms of undermining devolution. Governor Sakaja signed an affidavit, but then did not appear, Mr. Speaker. People must respect the Senate, because when we are sitting here to analyze 11 counts, Mr. Speaker, Honestly, in all fairness, they should at least be substantiated to some level. However, Mr. Speaker, I have lived through the post-election violence of 2007 2008. And it is very strange that 2007 I was also pregnant, Mr. Speaker. And when I remember, Mr. Speaker, the things that triggered the post-election violence, Mr. Speaker, in 2008 of January, it was such utterances such as Musiguze Mlima, Mr. Speaker. They started as a joke, and before you knew it, matatus were being stopped, and people were being asked, get off the matatu, and showcase your IDs, and arms and limbs were being chopped off, Mr. Speaker. So we might think it is a joke, this shareholding narrative, Mr. Speaker, but having lived through that post-election violence, and I remember very well, Mr. Speaker, that I even had to choose the people who are operating you know, on me in 2008, because I was afraid. You know, as kisses, we love everyone. People always think we are traitors because we welcome everyone. So at that time, the attack on us was from both sides, Mr. Speaker. And so I therefore, I do not 
take this shareholding narrative as a light thing. I do not take this Musiguze Mlima as a light thing, Mr. Speaker, because I have been affected directly. And on that count, Mr. Speaker, I definitely have seen that it has been substantiated. We have seen the evidence, and we have even seen repeated utterances of causing divisiveness in this country, Mr. Speaker. And I want to say today, Mr. Speaker, this country is not about one person. It is not about William Ruto. It is not about Rigathi Gashagwa. This country is about the 50 million Kenyans who have to live in peace and under the national unity, Mr. Speaker. And for that reason, Mr. Speaker, I want to say that on that shareholding narrative, I hold my ground and I will definitely vote that he should be impeached. Senator Kavindo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, let me start by uh, telling His Excellency, the Deputy President of this country, Paul Esana, and we wish you a quick recovery. Two, uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to quote a scripture which has been quoted here, uh, John 8, 7. Jesus told the people who took that woman to before him, whoever has no sin to be the first to take the stone and throw at that woman. And when he bent down, when he came up, there was none of them. All the men had gone, only the woman was standing there. And he told her, go in peace, your sins have been forgiven. Mr. Speaker, when I talk like this, I'm saying that uh, the other day we had the deputy president publicly ask for forgiveness. And the Bible in the, in the book of Matthew 14, uh, uh, Matthew 6 verse 14 and 15, says that if we don't forgive men their sins when they sin against us, our heavenly father will never forgive us our sins. And talking like this, Mr. Speaker, I want to say the mover of this motion, Honorable Mutuse, could not substantiate the allegations. He was asked questions, and people even outside on media are laughing and asking what kind of a lawyer is he, because he could not answer many of the questions, because I think he was not aware of what uh, of the motion. To me, it seemed like it was drafted by somebody else and it was given just to table it. Mr. Speaker, I want to say, even the last speech of the National Assembly, they said on impeachment, it is not necessary or important to substantiate every allegation and even to, 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 to make sure that you have all the evidence of the allegations because this is not like court. And I thought as a Senate we sit here as a court and whatever ruling we give here is acceptable. And so I wonder why one would stand and say that they could not uh, it, it is not a mass that they, they substantiate beyond reasonable doubt. I believe if we are impeaching a person, we should, uh, the, all the accusations must be substantiated and beyond reasonable doubt, because that is one's career we are about maybe to ruin. And this person has a family. This person has a career. When I think of uh, Waititu, when I think of Songo, for, for, for 10 good years, they cannot stand on any, any elective office. Uh, and, Order, and I had- Honorable Senators. Senator uh, Methu, you are hard in silence. Senator Fernandi, you are hard in silence. Thank you, Mr. Extend Speaker. the same treatment to Senator Kavindu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, it was just the other day, I had a uh, majority leader and many of us here say that Songo was impeached for no good reason. How do we reverse what we have already done 
on this, in this Senate. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to say, before we impeach anyone, we must substantiate all the charges and make sure that it is not something that we are going to eat back our words and start saying we did a mistake. Mr. Speaker, I stand here to say no to this motion. Senator Kathuri Murungi. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity also to make some comments, one or two comments on this important uh, exercise. Mr. Speaker, many Kenyans are wondering why the Deputy President is uh, being impeached. And they are saying if he is to be impeached, him and the President should be impeached at the same time. Mr. Speaker, the articles in the Constitution, our Constitution has given the National Assembly and the Senate this mandate to do these exercises or checks and balances to our uh, public officers. And Mr. Speaker, uh, Article 145, which we use this afternoon even to determine whether to proceed or not, is very elaborate on how to the process of impeaching uh, the Deputy President or the President. So, Mr. Speaker, we are here because this Senate actually has been, on several occasions, uh, we have brought deputy governors, governors, and now the deputy president. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, kind of protecting me from, uh, from this, the Honorable Speaker, Mr. Speaker, kind of protecting me from some noise from behind. Senator Fernandez. So, Mr. Speaker, I Just was saying... Just move to your seat, your normal seat. I was trying to say that, Mr. It, it Speaker... It may be lonely, but please stick there. Proceed. Mr. Speaker, this House has blood deputy governors, governors, and now the deputy president. Mr. Speaker, what we are doing is a constitutional mandate. And therefore... I will ask Kenyans that they should bear with the Constitution. It is the Constitution which has brought us where we are. I want to, I want to thank the parties that were here for the last two days, the parties representing the Deputy President and the parties representing the National Assembly, Mr. Speaker. All these senators have been sitting as judges for the last two days and nights. And, Mr. Speaker, it is only that uh, this is a court, like a high court, only that the judges in the High Court or the, court, the courts do not discuss the cases that they handle, but they meet and discuss, and then they make the decision. And then the decision is learned by maybe the president of the court. But because now we make a decision through a vote, that is why, Mr. Speaker, we find ourselves here. And this evening, these jurists will make one, their decision in one or the other, and Mr. Speaker, what I request Kenyans from today, whatever decision will be made to maintain peace, love, and unity, as was envisaged since independence in 1963. Because, Mr. Speaker, where we are, a decision will be made by the Senate in one way or the other, either to impeach the deputy president or to appoint, or not to impeach, I mean not to impeach Mr. Speaker. And I want to talk to the people that represent the Meru community. I want to assure them that whatever decision their senator will make is for the best interest of the Meru people. And I want to assure them that their future will be bright, if not more bright, Mr. Speaker. And what they need is service delivery, not individuals. Whatever decision that I'll make is for their best interest, because they elected me to make some decisions. Some are soft decisions or hard decisions. But what they need at the end of the day, they will ask their senator for five years, what have you done for us? But I, as I finish, Mr. Speaker, I want to encourage all of us in a verse from the Bible, the Saronians, chapter 5, verse 18, which says that in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. So... Whatever you do, thank God. Whatever happens to you, thank God, because we always should give thanks to God. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Senator Crystal Asige.
Speaker, the Parliament of Kenya has gone through a great deal in a very short amount of time, many firsts, and it is utterly painful for me to know that the world keeps seeing us time and time again under such lugubrious circumstances. However, Speaker, it has taught me many, many lessons. And it's also reminded me of many that I've known for several years, one of which I was taught by Tony Evans, which is, if all you see is what you see, then you don't see all there is to be seen. Speaker, I have never met the Deputy President. In fact, in the last two days, the first time we've ever shared any space together. And to be honest, I don't think that we have much in common. I personally, feel like there is, a lot there, uh, to, there is a lot to be desired in his leadership style, for me personally. However, instead of going to the Bible, I want to go instead into my own experience and draw some parallels. Mr. Speaker, I, of course, know, uh, people know that I have glaucoma and I've been uh, fighting and battling it for several years of my life. And Speaker, when I first got my diagnosis, when I was just a teenager in high school, I was told that it was imminent. There was no running away from my condition. And I didn't know at the time that I had anything that was going on. I was just going about my life, but inside of me and around me, there was a condition that was building up and building up and building up, and I had no idea what was going to happen in the future. Mr. Speaker, now I have le I've been left blind, and I cannot see in front of me even when I put my hand in front of my face. Mr. Speaker, the parallels I draw with my life and the current hearing that we are sitting in today is that the Deputy President did not foresee this happening to him either. Mr. Speaker, I have also drawn parallels of feeling out of control, which I assume that he feels. Being given a diagnosis that seems eminent, that he cannot stop. Mr. Speaker, I also feel that um, he, has, he is probably feeling fear, that's what I've heard. Mr. Speaker, feeling betrayed, feeling angry. And I felt all those feelings because of a situation that I can draw parallels with in this, in this hearing. And Mr. Speaker, I have been fighting and fighting, pleading and praying, trying everything in my power to mitigate, to stop, just like he has been doing in the last several um, week, uh, weeks that this has been going on, Speaker. And it's funny that it's Blindness Awareness Month this month in October, because there are many lessons, like I said, that I have learned, and I wish that the public would also take from this experience. Mr. Speaker, I hope that, this, that um, the public understands that um, when they have their back to the wall, when they've been in any kind of battle, even when they feel isolated, there is something called golfer's elbow, which I learned. Golfer's elbow is the idea that, um, or is a condition that golfers usually have when they hold on to the grip of their club too tight for a long period of time and they end up injuring their wrist all the way up to their elbow because they're holding on too tight, too tight to an outcome, too tightly. And I've learned that sometimes you just have to let that go. And I hope that the public can take that away from this situation. Mr. Speaker, we must move away from hege hege hegemony the idea of being dominated by one group or a person or a, or a company or a state because we are a democratic republic and we need to move away from such ideology, such utterances, such behavior, Mr. Speaker. However, in the 11 counts, I have seen many that have no evidence and I've seen some that do have some evidence, but I have not been particularly given confidence by the witness in chief, the mover of this motion, when I saw him up on the stand, Mr. Speaker. Although none of us can relate to what it's like to being a deputy president in this room for sure, we can definitely relate to the lessons that I've just mentioned. Mr. Speaker, make decisions today that will not betray you tomorrow. That's one. I also want to, um, to share that even though you're in a battle, whatever that might be, financial, personal, medical, whatever it is that you're going through at the moment and you feel like your back is on the wall and everything, all the odds are against you, remember that it gets better. You do better. You will experience better. And we will become better, Mr. Speaker. I will finish, and I hope that the senators will remember what I said to them yesterday from the Bible, Proverbs 17, 15.
Dr. Nyoto. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I think I cannot thank you more for affording me this opportunity at this late hour. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I stand right from the onset to say that I oppose this particular motion, Mr. Speaker, and I have reasons for doing so. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the key witness or the mover of the motion uh, came before this house yesterday, Mr. Speaker. And although I'm not a lawyer, but I know that it is in there in the rules of natural justice that whoever alleges must prove. The Honorable Motuse was not able to prove any of the allegations or any of the grounds that he laid against uh, His Excellency the Deputy President, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Kenyans were and are watching these proceedings. They were able to see the cross-examination -exam and to hear the cross-examination of uh, the Honorable Motuse, Mr. Speaker. And I want to urge this House, Mr. Speaker, that if we want to uphold the dignity and the honor of this house that Kenyans were and are still watching, you cannot impeach the, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Mr. Speaker, on allegations, on grounds that were not able to, that, that the mover was not able to prove, Mr. Speaker. And that is what prompted the question, I think, by Senator Wambua, which later was asked by uh, Senator um, Awakia Omtata, which you were able to stand, uh, to stand down because he had already been asked, whose motion was Motusis? because it was not his motion. He had no proof of any or for any of the allegations, Mr. Speaker, and that is why this House, in order for them, in order for us to uphold, like I've said, the dignity and honor, we need to vote no to this motion, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, many that have spoken before me have talked about uh, the woman, the adulterous woman that was caught in the Bible. Uh, Senator Kajuang put it even better that they did not bring the man that he was, she was caught in the act with. Mr. Speaker, we need to ask ourselves, how good are we? How clean are we? Are we qualified to throw the first stone, Mr. Speaker? I think that is the first question that we should ask ourselves, that as we judge the Deputy President, how good are we? How many mistakes, how many offenses have we ever committed? How many sins even have we ever committed? And God forgive us, and our fellow human beings also forgive us, Mr. Speaker. But the most moving uh, thing, Mr. Speaker, is that we did not give the Deputy President an opportunity I know, of course, the motion to, uh, uh, to, to, to defer this particular, uh, to adjourn up to Saturday did not pass. But Mr. Speaker, under Section uh, 5-0 of our Constitution, Mr. Speaker, we, 50-0, Mr. Speaker, we need to give uh, any person, 50-0, that, that is 5-0, uh, Mr. Speaker, 2-F, to be present and when, when being tried, unless the conduct of the accused person makes it impossible for the trial to proceed. Mr. Speaker, the Deputy President uh, was taken ill according to what the Council reported to this House. And Mr. Speaker, we did not give him an opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I draw your attention also to our Constitution, uh, Article 145, 145, Sub, uh, clause 5, the president shall have the right to appear and, not or, and be represented before the special committee, Mr. Speaker. We did not give him that opportunity. Mr. Speaker, because I can see my time is wearing out, if not for anything, Mr. Speaker, I ask this House, you cannot condemn a sick person. Any one of us can get sick. I want to appeal to my colleagues, Mr. Speaker. Nobody chooses when to get sick and when to be in good health. You cannot, we cannot afford to judge a person, to condemn a person when they are in hospital, Mr. Speaker. And so I want to appeal to the members of this House uh, that if not for anything else, you consider that the Deputy President has been taken ill and show the necessary compassion. And Mr. Speaker, I want to 
uh, my majority leader is here and he said a he made a statement that was very disturbing that even those those that are saying that it can bring division should senator mogene Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, first on my own behalf and on behalf of the people of the great county of Nyamira, I want to send a message of quick recovery to His Excellency President uh, Rigadi, and we wish him a speedy recovery. Mr. Speaker, the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1, that there is a season for everything. There is a season to be born politically and a season to die politically. That's biblical. The Speaker, I've, I've agonized. Mr. Speaker, I've gone through a lot of soul searching. Mr. Speaker, as I listened to the evidence that was tendered, against. That, that as, as I listened, Honorable, Mr. Speaker. Honorable, just pause the time for Senator Mogheni. Let us allow Senator Mogheni to be heard in total silence, please. Speaker, as a, as a lawyer and a person who witnessed the birth of the 2010 Constitution, Mr. Speaker, I strongly believe, Mr. Speaker, that Kenya belongs to all the 42 plus tribes, Mr. Speaker. And what has disturbed me, Mr. Speaker, for the two days I've sat here, Mr. Speaker, what would happen to my community in Kisi and in Yamira if we ran our government through this theory of shareholding? Mr. Speaker, as I speak tonight, Mr. Speaker, the people of the two counties of Omogusi, Nyamira and Kisi, are victims of that theory of shareholding. That community, Mr. Speaker, called Omogusi, has got no even a single PS serving in government, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as we, we speak this evening, Mr. Speaker, the Omogusi people, Mr. Speaker, have been the biggest victims of this theory of shareholding. Mr. Speaker, the constitution that we enacted in 2010, in Article 27, Mr. Speaker, clearly states that we should not discriminate, Mr. Speaker. I hope, Mr. Speaker, when I cast my vote tonight, I'll be sending a message from the people of Nyamira, Mr. Speaker, that a government is formed for all the tribes in the Republic of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. I've organized, Mr. Speaker, on the issues that have been brought in this motion, touching on the widow and the children of the late Governor Fonyeri, Gashagwa. And, Mr. Speaker, I wondered if adverse statements and inferences have been made touching on the conduct of the deputy president against the widow of the former governor and the children of the late governor, the nephews of the deputy president. Why, Mr. Speaker, I ask as a father, why, Mr. Speaker, did the widow and the children of the late governor Gashagwa swear an affidavit to dispel all the things that have been said against a scheme of swindling those children. Why, Mr. Speaker? Why didn't they swear an affidavit, Mr. Speaker? That has, that has troubled me a lot. And I, as I cast my vote tonight, Mr. Speaker, I'll be casting my vote for those children who lost their mother, who lost their father, but who were not given an opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to appear before this House and tell us, Mr. Speaker, that there has not been any wrongdoing from the duty president to those children. Count number one, count number eight, is about the utterances that were made by the duty speaker. I hope, Mr. Speaker, that the person who will occupy that coveted position of duty president will reflect on what John says in 
chapter 3, verse 5. Mr. Speaker, the Bible says that the tongue is a small part of the body, but the tongue is also fire, and it's a world of evil among parts of the body. If the deputy president has check, had checked his utterances, Mr. Speaker, perhaps we will not be having this motion this evening. So, as we vote tonight, Mr. Speaker, let's also learn, let's also learn from what the tongue has done to Honorable Gashawa. I will vote, Mr. Speaker, where I'm convinced that allegations against the deputy president have been proved. I reserve my vote to be cast at the right time. Senator Boni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the position of the Deputy President of Kenya is very high. It is a very high calling. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, as we make a decision on the Deputy President of Kenya, I want to remind him that of those to whom more is given, indeed, more is expected of them. And he should not feel that he is being victimized because, Mr. Speaker, the highest standard of this constitution in 2013, by dint of lack of integrity, the Deputy Chief Justice, Nancy Barasa, lost her job, merely because she pinched the nose of Kwamboka. The Deputy President indeed did worse than pinching the nose of somebody. Mr. Speaker, the Deputy President, seeing the allegations against him, I can't imagine that he moves around with the moninga of man, of faith, and truthful man. Mr. Speaker, if really we must talk about faith, may I remind the Deputy President, of a man of faith, a man of letters called Bill Paul. Bill Paul said, man of faith, that integrity is like virginity. You lose it only once. And when you lose it, you can never get it back. The deputy president has lost that virginity of leadership. Mr. Speaker, Coming from a community that paid for the price of inflammatory speeches in Likoni, in Molo, and in Transoya, if I had time, I would discuss what some of my relatives went through, including Pastor Liai from Ichina Village. Mr. Speaker, during the tribal clashes of 1992 and 1997. I would like to remind the Deputy President of the post-election violence of 2007-2008. One of the reasons why we had to have this progressive constitution that will be removing him, hopefully, this evening from office. Mr. Speaker, even as we ask the Deputy President to leave office, we must insist that the DCI and the ESCC and other investigative institutions must pursue this matter beyond this vote. I have on mind, Mr. Speaker, the activities of the intricate web of companies up to 22, so to speak. The reason I believe young Mutuse could not bring all this, dear senators, colleagues, is because effort requires money, requires time to do all that research. Some of them you have to do glance time for you to get information. I believe 
that if the deputy president had taken the dock, we were going to completely undress him. We would have asked him to justify what activities each and every one of those companies was doing. It's part of the reason why he stepped down, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have evidence, which I don't wish to be part of the, the case, that as soon as the deputy president's brother died, the wife went to the corporate branch of the cooperative bank and started crying there that the manager should stop the deputy president from operating these accounts. Mr. Speaker, finally, the deputy president must be investigated for the role. Senator Eddy. Mr. Speaker, I thank you and I recognize the pressure of time. Mr. Speaker, I am here because of the kindness of the people of Migori County who sent me here that at such a, such, a, such a time, Mr. Speaker, I need to be cautious of the Article 125 of the Constitution, which requires us as a House that in matters such as this, Mr. Speaker, we must behave like judges, because under Article 125 of the Constitution, Mr. Speaker, we sit as a High Court, Mr. Speaker. And in the words of Socrates, Mr. Speaker... It has been non-stop broadcasting live from the Senate and it is not over just yet. The debate on the floor of the House has now ceded room for the next event, the historic impeachment vote, the first one ever for a deputy president. Every end of the Constitution is stretched to its limit tonight as Kenyans witness what is the imminent removal from office of a sitting deputy president. It is a special and expanded edition of the News Gang here. The regular four, joined by a guest gangster duo of constitutional experts, Charles Kanjama and Abdikader Mohamed. We will be talking through the momentous events of the evening once the voting starts. The news gang will be here in just a moment once the voting begins. But for now, it's back to the Senate for the debate. Courteously and considering soberly, Mr. Speaker, are more than half of the charges, Mr. Speaker. And I find that ground one, five and six on the utterances of the deputy, of the deputy, of the deputy president, Mr. Speaker, violate Article 91 of the Constitution and Article 232 of the Constitution. We cannot have political parties, Mr. Speaker, that are founded on the basis of, the, of ethnicity and dividing national resources on the basis of ethnicity, Mr. Speaker. Number two, Mr. Speaker, that would make the ground, ground number four, which actually also happened to be reason number four for why the deputy president must leave office, Mr. Speaker, uh, the violation of Article 160 of the Constitution, Mr. Speaker, of undermining the, the, the judiciary, Mr. Speaker. There was an eminent threat to the judges there, Mr. Speaker. You realize that in my judgment, Mr. Speaker, I excuse ground number eight on the basis of the fact that there was no uh, uh, proof that there was, there was a petition that was not, was not filed, Mr. Speaker. But on the threat, Mr. Speaker, I think that the deputy uh, president stands in pitch, Mr. Speaker. Ground number nine, Mr. Speaker, on NIS, Mr. Speaker, we know that this country has faced serious terror attacks, Mr. Speaker. And the moment the deputy uh, president, Mr. Speaker, showcases the secrecy of uh, deficiency in our security infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, and you know that under Article 240, he has platforms to be able to express himself, Mr. Speaker. It is a violation of the Constitution, Mr. Speaker. Lastly, on ground number 11, Mr. Speaker, on bullying KEMSA official, Mr. Speaker, it has been proven here beyond reasonable doubt, Mr. Speaker, that the Deputy President is not a member of the company 
that was listed. He's not an employee of that company, Mr. Speaker, yet he goes ahead and makes calls on behalf of that company, Mr. Speaker. That is impeachable. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, I must call the counsel of the deputy, uh, uh, the deputy president to order, Mr. Speaker, especially counsel Paul Muite, Mr. Speaker, for actually practicing law in this seat, Mr. Speaker. You cannot say that at the level of the deputy president, Mr. Speaker, he was okay in this house the entire time, and then when asked, you are saying you cannot be able to account for, for his whereabouts, and you know that the deputy president, Mr. Speaker, also must be able to be taken care of by the DG of Health, Mr. Speaker, who could have given us a document to be able to substantiate whether the deputy president is sick, Mr. Speaker. While I say sorry to the deputy president, Mr. Speaker, I think this kind of deceit should also be tantamount to further impeachment, Mr. Speaker. I do therefore say that on ground two, three, seven, eight, and 10, they are not substantiated. But on ground one, five, six, four, nine, and 11, Mr. Speaker, this is a fight against tribalism that is done by one individual that then we must... Senator Osotzi, unfortunately, you only have four minutes because we terminate at exactly 10.30. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'll be so quick. Mr. Speaker, uh, when the Deputy President was here, I remembered uh, the saying of a famous uh, philosopher, 19th century, uh, Lord Acton, who said, power tends to corrupt, and absolute power, cor uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, a few of us here served with the Deputy President in the National Assembly. And when we were there in the National Assembly, the Deputy President was a very humble man, very simple, very social, and uh, was uh, rare to talk. But listening to the judges and uh, having seen what has been happening around, this is not the same man. This is a different man. So indeed, I want to agree with this philosopher that power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And this is, it may affect all of us here. So there is something we need to learn from what has happened today. Mr. Speaker, I also want to congratulate the members here for their decency and maturity in conducting a fair trial. Mr. Speaker, it is not true that the Deputy President has not been given a hearing. We had to adjourn this house for two hours to wait for the witness to come. He didn't come. And uh, Mr. Speaker, you know that the tradition of this house, that sometimes we receive written submissions. We do that in our committees. We do that in public participation. So the members who are saying that he was not given a fair hearing is that that is not true because this House tried as much as possible to get uh, the Deputy President to come. Mr. Speaker, a lot has been said about various laws and uh, articles of the Constitution that the Deputy President has violated. But one important article of the Constitution that runs through all the charges Mr. Speaker, is Article 131 of the Constitution, which read together with Article 147, clearly says that the Deputy President is a symbol of national unity. That is not the case, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if you go ahead, Article 131.2 says that the Deputy President, by dint of Article 147, should respect and uphold and safeguard the Constitution. That is not the case. The Deputy President should promote and enhance the unity of the nation. That is not the case. The Deputy President should respect, promote respect for diversity of, of the people and communities in Kenya. Mi Mr. Speaker, that is not the case. So if there is any piece of law that is going to send the deputy president home, 
is clear violation of Article 131 of the Constitution because the Deputy President is the principal assistant to the President and therefore exercises powers of the President as per Article 131 of the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, if there is one charge, because we have 11 charges, that is going to send the Deputy President home, is charge number one. I listened to the evidence that was brought here by his counsel. That evidence of uh, the coalition agreement of Kenya Kwanzaa was not sufficient, was not convincing. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, the Deputy President conveniently hid for... Your time is up. Majority Leader, you may now have to reply. Mr. Speaker, so I beg to uh, hereby reply, uh, having listened to the contributions of my colleagues on this very important motion on trial by impeachment of the Deputy President Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa. I want to thank colleagues that have taken time to give their views, both in support and those opposing this motion, because that's how you grow a democracy, Mr. Speaker. We may not all have to agree uh, on the same subject matter, Mr. Speaker, but the chance to even speak and say what you feel about an issue is an important attribute. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, I agree with uh, um, the contribution that was made by one of the advocates for the Assembly, that comparing what you are doing today with previously what used to happen, where in the one o'clock news, vice presidents will be changed without any notice, and the elaborate process, Mr. Speaker, that we have gone through up to this point is great for our country. Mr. Speaker, I appreciate uh, the National Assembly, the team of the Deputy President, Mr. Speaker, that has presented us with information to help us make a fair judgment of this case. Mr. Speaker, I strongly disagree with those that hold the view that the Senate hasn't been as fair to the Deputy President as perhaps they would have expected. To the best of my knowledge, Mr. Speaker, I think as a House, we did the best that was within our means. We granted the opportunity, was given sufficient notice, Mr. Speaker. It is only in the unfortunate circumstance of this afternoon where he was taken ill, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I'd wish to take this time to extend uh, my message of goodwill to him and wish that he can quickly recover and go get on with his other duties, Mr. Speaker, uh, both as a human being and should, whichever way this vote goes, Mr. Speaker, because it's not in my hands, but in the hands of the 67 uh, jury that are here, Mr. Speaker, that he shall continue to thrive. I wish him well, Mr. Speaker. Like I observed earlier, this is a friend, and friends wish each other well under all circumstances. Mr. Speaker, you know, just as a final thought, I thought about the journey of the Deputy President and the tribulations uh, that have occurred to him as inquiries to either his conduct or utterances. And I'm reminded of a book I once read, Mr. Speaker, by Senegalese satirist Osman Sembene, a book called Hala, where, Mr. Speaker, a very rich businessman by the name El Haji looks and desires a beautiful young lady by the name Ngone and finally takes her in as a third wife. Unfortunately, on the same night that he marries her, he develops erectile dysfunction, Mr. Speaker, and is not able to consummate the marriage. Sometimes in life, Mr. Speaker, when you fall down, you have to prepare to get down before you eventually can rise up, Mr. Speaker. I do hope, Mr. Speaker, that even in this particular process, the Deputy President will emerge stronger, better as a human being, as a leader, and that there can be better days uh, ahead for him. With those very many remarks, Mr. Speaker, I beg to reply and wish that our colleagues in this House make a decision in the best interest of the country. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Now, honorable senators, these are the